Hi, this is Rob McLean from LearnToCruiseOnline.ca. This is the fifth episode in the Connected Boat series dealing with Wi-Fi on board. For some people, the thought of Wi-Fi on board is anathema. The last thing they want on board is to be getting emails from the office. On the other hand, I earn my living on the internet, so if I have Wi-Fi access, I can spend a lot more time cruising. In general, there are two contexts for talking about Wi-Fi on board, internet access and onboard device communications. There are a number of advantages to internet access on board, including having the ability to get weather and safety data, staying in touch with friends and family, uh, folks like me who are workaboards, uh, which enables a longer cruise, and of course there's entertainment. With respect to the second context, onboard device communications, an increasing number of us want to have boat data available on our mobile devices and Wi-Fi is one of the main technologies that can enable that. Let's discuss internet access in three situations at the marina, coastal cruising, and offshore. In a marina, what you need will depend on the quality of the marina's Wi-Fi service and the degree to which Wi-Fi signals can reach the interior of the boat. For casual use, a cell phone or tablet-enabled personal hotspot may work. If you are close to the marina's Wi-Fi antennas, an external USB antenna may give you the access you need on your PC. In our case, we're in a steel boat and needed to mount an antenna outside the boat to get adequate connectivity in the cabin. There's a wide array of increasingly powerful rail or mast mounted devices that build the circuitry right into the base of the antenna, which enables using, using an ethernet cable between the antenna and your PC or router in the boat. Some manufacturers are claiming the ability to connect over a distance of 50 kilometers, but three to seven kilometers is more common. That's still enough to connect from a mooring field to a marine, a marina hotspot. For access while coastal cruising, you'll likely be relying on data services offered by mobile phone companies. We've been able to get data service on a, a cell phone or tablet from the cockpit within about 15 to 20 miles of shore but it doesn't work inside the boat, again, because we have a steel hull. With a mast mounted cell antenna and amplifier, that extends the range to about 40 miles, limited principally by the requirement to have line of sight over the horizon between the antenna on the boat and the cell towers. It's noteworthy that some manufacturers are offering a solution that combines long-distance Wi-Fi and cell connectivity. Whatever the system you're looking at, it's important before buying to make sure that it's compatible with the cell network that you use with your devices. When we're beyond 40 to 50 miles, we become reliant on satellite services. There's been a lot of innovation recently in both devices and services that facilitate offshore connectivity. Satellite uh, phone providers have uh, traditionally provided data kits and services uh, that complement the voice services they offer with their sat phones. Um, generally speaking, these uh, data connections are not cheap or fast. More recently, satellite service providers have introduced a variety of gateway devices that are intended to enable PCs and smartphones to place calls and access data over a satellite service. 
These services also aren't cheap, but they are starting to become realistically affordable for a larger slice of cruising boaters. And of course, there always have been a set of services targeted, targeted at the mega yacht owners where price is no object. Beyond internet access, there are a variety of other services of interest to cruisers. Uh, for example, Delorme and others offer devices that bundle satellite-based emergency communications with various forms of text messaging. There are various ways to get email on a cruising boat, including satellite-based services that focus on compressing the data to save data costs. It is still possible to get email on a cruising boat via a high-frequency single side sideband radio equipped with a Pactor device. One of the pioneers in offering this service is a company called Sailmail, which now also distributes email via a variety of satellite devices, including some of the ones referenced earlier. Turning now to onboard device communications over Wi-Fi, we're seeing a lot of new devices emerge to enable you to get boat data on your mobile devices. This page lists a very small subset of the available options. Many of these devices offer other functionality beyond straight Wi-Fi communications, so your choice might be influenced by how what the functionalities are that the device offers in addition to Wi-Fi and how that fits into your boat network. In sum, however important Wi-Fi is to you on board, you'll be able to find a solution that meets your requirements and budget. Whether you only need casual, occasional access or, like me, fall into the work aboard category, and whether you don't need access to instrument data anywhere but the cockpit or alternatively are looking for multiple ways to monitor boat instruments and alarms. This is the conclusion of episode 5. See you on the next episode.